Good afternoon. Uh, this is the regular meeting of the Community Redevelopment and Housing Commission. Today is March 28th, 2018. Could I remind my fellow commissioners to turn their microphones on? Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Madam Recording Secretary, please take roll call. Commissioner Santana. Vice Chair Tardif. Present. Commissioner Cano. Commissioner Vasquez. Here. Commissioner Fraser. Commissioner uh, Ramos. Present. Commissioner Garcia. Here. Commissioner Solano. Uh, Chair Wood. <coughs> Present. We have quorum. Um, thank you. This is the time for the commission to consider matters under consent calendar items, including number one through three. Do any members have any corrections to the minutes or items they wish to pull for separate discussion or abstain on? No, not me. I would um, like to ask for just one modification to the minutes of March 1st, which was the second meeting we had. I just wanted to note under the um, commissioner comments for the public speakers at the CDPG presentations, um, I did address the four speakers that spoke to us that night from the public and thank them for speaking to us and that we were appreciative and would, I would take their comments into consideration. So I just wanted to have that in the record. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Do I have a motion to consider items one through three? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries five to zero. Oh, pardon me, with five votes with Commissioner Santana, Cano, Frazier, and Solano noted as absence. <clears throat> the next order of business is consideration of the regular business items. The first item on the business calendar is item number four, the Housing Authority Annual Plan. Is there any member of the public that would like to speak on the matter? If so, you may fill out a request to speak form with the recording secretary. You have three minutes to speak. Also, we will not accept any additional request to speak cards once we begin the public comment session. If you haven't already done so, please give your form to the recording secretary. Madam recording secretary, do we have any public speakers? No, no. Thank you. Will the staff report on this matter? Uh, no, the staff do not have a, a report, but are, we are available for any questions from the commission. <clears throat> Thank you. Does the commission have any questions for the staff? Um, I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, the number of respondents that filled out the survey that participated, was that number uh, about the same as in past years, higher or lower? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I think it was a little lower. I think last year we had about 50, and this time we only had about 31. Yeah, it, it did seem a little leaner. Was there, what kind of outreach, how, how are these respondents or approached or found or? participants if you will we sent out invites to all of our residents that live in the city of Santa Ana so about 1700 and and only about those attended and it's uh, it's quite a quite a significant um, investment of our uh, resources for that mailing um, we uh, m translate the uh, translate the notice in all three languages and then we mail it out uh, by physical mail to all of our uh, participants here in uh, in Santa Ana, and uh, um, the uh, the cost is several hundred dollars for the uh, for the postage and, and mailing. It, it was it was a procedure that I implemented about two years ago. Okay, I was only curious because again, it didn't seem to draw the same, you know a high number. Um, if there were other avenues that might solicit more input. Yes, we noticed that too. Okay, um, the other. Quick question I had was, I, in reading through some of the respondents, um, some of their questionnaires and, and responses, 
uh, an overriding consensus or concern was rent control, specifically with uh, members asking if the city would entertain ideas to limit rent increases in certain properties to once per year. Is that under consideration? Um, is that kicked out to a different committee? Uh, so uh, staff uh, um, took into consideration all the uh, recommendations that we received from our resident advisory board and consolidated those recommendations for the formation of our annual plan. Um, in regards to a, a policy decision for uh, rent stabilization uh, in uh, Santa Ana, that would be, uh, that would be, we would look to our city council uh, for, uh, for direction on that policy matter. Okay. Do any other commissioners have any comments or questions? Uh, yeah, I would just like to quickly uh, echo what um, Gary has said. That was the first thing that I noticed on the majority of these surveys was a real concern with increasing rents. And I think that's something that has been said at multiple city council meetings. Um, so I'm wondering if there's a way that we as a commission can enter entertain that conversation at a later point as a part of our agenda. Um, <clears throat> well, so uh, on February 6th, our uh, staff provided a uh, work study session to City Council on rent stabilization. Um, in follow-up to the direction we received from City Council on that policy decision, we are going to be reaching out to uh, stakeholders on both sides of the, uh, the issue, uh, uh, both, uh, you know, residents and different advocacy organizations that are in favor of rent control as well as the opponent uh, organizations that are against rent control. Um, uh, when we schedule those, uh, um, those uh, working group meetings with those two groups, uh, we would be glad to uh, um, send an invite, invitation to our commission to attend either, either one of those working group meetings to contribute to that discussion. It is a, a very um, uh, contentious issue, as we observed on February 6th, uh, with over you know three hours of public comment. Um, but um, uh, you know we would be glad to extend the invitation to the commission uh, to attend those working group meetings. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. No other questions or comments. At this time, do we have a motion to approve item number four, the Housing Authority Annual Plan? I would so move. Thank you. Do we, does anyone second the motion? I second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries five to zero with Commissioner Santana, Cano, Frazier, and Solano noted as absent. At this time, I've, I've received a request and have approved to um, move our second item to the end of tonight and we are going to jump to the third item on the business calendar which is item number six the emergency solutions grant program funding for fiscal year 2018 through 2019. <clears throat> is there any member of the public that would like to speak on the matter if so you may fill out a request to speak form with the recording secretary you have three minutes to speak also we will not accept any additional request to speak cards once we begin the public comment session if you haven't already done so, please give your form to the recording secretary. Madam recording secretary, do we have any public speakers we on this not. topic? Thank you. Will staff report on the matter? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff do not have a presentation on this item, but we are available to answer any questions. <clears throat> thank you. Um, do, does the commission have any questions for staff? Um, I do have a couple quick questions. Um, looking at Exhibit 1 on page or Section 6, page 3, how um, the funding recommendations, how were those um, numbers devised, arrived at, uh, meaning you know, the st street, outreach, st street outreach would receive $130,000 versus emergency shelter operations, 55,000. So I'm wondering how those were broken up under what considerations. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Um, in regards to the funding for our ESG program for next year, 
We uh, went off of the application and the RFP from the 2017-2018 RFP. Um, when we released and um, awarded all of our nonprofit organizations, we also indicated that there was an option for the renewal of those funds rather than releasing another RFP. So the majority of the activities are very comparable to what they are currently this year. We modified it slightly in regards to the um, street outreach, um, anticipating the fact that there may not be the, um, as large of numbers in the Civic Center and wanting to reprioritize those funds to rapid rehousing, which would be to actually get um, the individuals into housing. The majority of the other activities are very similar to what they are this year. Okay, great, and you, you hit my second question, which was where, where that money had moved to, and that makes sense, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments from my fellow commissioners? Seeing there are no more questions, do we have a motion to approve item six, the Emergency Solutions Grant Program funding for fiscal year 2018 through 2019? Can I have a motion? So moved. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Does anyone second the motion? I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries five to zero with Commissioners Santana, Cano, Frazier, and Solano noted as absent. At this time, we will return to the, what was the second item on the business calendar, item number five, the Community Development Block Grant CDBG Nonprofit Application Recommendations. Is there any member of the public that would like to speak on this matter? If so, you may fill out a request to speak form with the recording secretary. You have three minutes to speak. Also, we will not accept any additional request to speak cards once we begin the public comment session. If you haven't already done so, please give your <clears throat> form to the recording secretary. Madam Recording Secretary, do we have any speakers? Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we call up Marco Priego? Good afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Marco Priego, and I work for Community Health Initiative of Orange County also known as CHIOC, an organization being considered for the CDBG funding for the next fiscal year. I want to provide a testimony on the work that CHIOC does in Santa Ana and how it directly works towards connecting vulnerable populations to services and help reduce crimes in Santa Ana. And I, I will share a story of Mr. Garcia, a Santa Ana native and resident whose name has been changed for, to protect his uh, privacy. Mr. Garcia, currently on five-year probation for the Orange County Probation Department, has a history of heroin addiction and petty crime to feed his habit. He was released from custody into formal probation with a mandate that he gets help for his addiction. Garcia is currently homeless and camping at the Plaza of the Flags in Santa Ana. I immediately referred him to the Healthcare Agency Behavioral Health Services to begin his outpatient program while his Medi-Cal got renewed and reviewed and approved. The probation officer's overall plan is to reduce his recidivism and decrease Garcia's opiate cravings. I also referred him to a state certified pharmacy for a no cost opiate blocker injection through the help of AB 109 unit at healthcare agency. And this was to reduce his withdrawals and reduce cravings. Through the coordination of CHIOC, the probation department and the Orange County Social Services, I was able to secure approval for his Medi-Cal benefits, which was all that he needed for his probation officer to get him into a fellowship program to begin an 80-day detox program. <clears throat> I immediately called Garcia and shared the news to him and his probation officer. Mr. Garcia expressed words of hope and resilience, and he hopes to get into a residential program in order to start a work program on their Taller San Jose or Habitat for Humanity. And these are his words. I don't want to end up in a state prison. 
I want to go back to my family, and I want to live a clean and sober life, free from drugs and free from criminal activity. Mr. Garcia and his probation officer were both delighted and thankful for how CHIOC has helped every step of the way into recovery through our healthcare enrollment services. CHIOC relentlessly continues to be a bridge of hope and a seed of new beginnings. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Madam Recording Secretary, we did not have any other public speakers. Thank you. Will staff report on this matter? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff do not have a presentation on this item, but uh, staff are available to um, run through any of the scenarios uh, that are presented to the Commission today. Well, I, I would like to ask, um, I don't know if, if you could do it, Judson, or if you want me to do it, but just a brief overview. I mean, the Commissioners received three different um, scenarios um, as a suggestion on levels of funding and what those would entail if we went with any one of those three. Could you just recap the basic synopsis for each one of those? Of course, yeah. Uh, uh, Daisy, do you want to come to the, to the laptop? Uh, I, also, I also forgot to mention one, one, one important thing uh, um, as well, which I needed to, to state. Um, on the uh, second page, so page 5-2, yes. uh, the third paragraph down, we state, once the city receives the actual CDBG allocation for fiscal year 2018-19 from HUD, the approved program funding will be increased or decreased in proportion to the actual grant allocation. Staff will reassess the total recommendations if reduced by more than 25%. So, uh, as Daisy's uh, preparing the Excel spreadsheet there, um, uh, I want to, I want to, state that following the approval of the fiscal year 2018 omnibus spending bill, there's a very likely possibility that we may receive more funds than what we are anticipating as provided in this staff report. In past, year, it is, in past years, it has been small variations, but this year it could be a much larger amount of funding. For fiscal year 2018, the omnibus provides $3.3 billion for the Community Development Fund, and of that amount, $3.3 billion would be used for carrying out the Community Development Block Grant Program, which is equal to a $300 million or 10% increase over fiscal year 2017. If we receive more funds than what we are anticipating, than the $792,000 that we are anticipating, staff want the flexibility, and a flexibility to reallocate based on these criteria. So first, to reallocate proportionally up to the maximum amount of what each organization requested. Second, to allocate the remainder of the funds to the next highest scoring proposal on the list up to the maximum of what the organization requested. And third, to allocate any remainder of funds equally to each funded organization. Um, so uh, that, uh, th that was a lot in one, in one statement here, but uh, what we're trying to say is, is if we receive more than the $792,000, which is what, we're, what we are anticipating based on the omnibus bill that was passed last, uh, um, last Thursday, um, that we want to allocate it. We don't want to have to come back to the commission to reallocate it. We want to allocate it to first to the maximum funding that the, that the amount that the organization requested, second to the next highest scoring organization on the list, and then any remainder uh, 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 equally to all the organ to all the organizations, so that we we wouldn't have to come back to the commission for that specific reallocation. Okay. Um, so I do want to add that to our to our staff report um, to revise that uh, that paragraph. <clears throat> Thank um, you. But uh, getting into the scenario, so Daisy will walk us through the three scenarios as we're as we're uh, presenting here today for consideration by the commission. And, and again, I would just ask to just just do a brief recap on basically on what number are funded on each scenario and what, what that was based on, just, just so we all have that in front of us again tonight. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. So as you can see, um, there are three scenarios before you today. All three scenarios um, have the same exact scores on those. It's just based on a different type of funding level. So the first recommendation, or scenario number one, is simply based on the average recommendation that all of you cumulatively recommended. 
um, based on the application and evaluation process. If you look at scenario two, scenario two is presented to give you a visual representation on what it would look like if you as a commission elected to fund the organizations up to their maximum requested and what that would look like. So if we go back to scenario one, based on your initial funding recommendations, we're looking at 13 nonprofit organizations being funded. Scenario two. This is 14. Oh, yes. Okay. Scenario two at the maximum request or the applicant requested funding levels, 11 organizations would be funded. And under scenario three, which is a visual representation of what it would look like if you funded the organizations at their minimum requested funding. That would be 19. Correct. And actually, I just wanted to point out, um, if you take a look at scenario three and you look at the scores, you'll see that the bottom two, at the last two that were recommended for funding there, their score is 82.67. And if you look at the next one down the line, that is also 82.67. So actually, we wouldn't be able to draw the line there. So we would have to either, or you would recommend to fund all three of those or go above that and just stop at the 83% uh, score. Correct. And, I, so noted. and as staff, we're recommending that you fund, and the organizations you decide to fund, you fund at no less than the minimum that they've identified as the minimum requested funding level. Right. Right. So regardless of which scenario you choose and how you allocate them, that the organizations that do receive funding, at least they receive at least the minimum they requested. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Um, I think I just wanted to make sure that we had the numbers. So scenario one was fourteen entities. Scenario, scenario number two was eleven, and scenario number three was nineteen, just at, at these levels. Yes. Subject to further discussion and, uh, amongst us and alteration if we so choose. So with that in mind, I will, I, I'd like to open it up to comments and questions from the commission um, specific to these three recommendations uh, or scenarios so that we can focus on one of these and, and narrow it down with the idea of if we get to one scenario that we could then modify it um, to, to go further down the list or, or up the list. So without trying to introduce a lot of other different scenarios unless a commissioner really feels that's necessary. So at this time, I'd like to open it up to questions and comments from my commissioners on these th three scenarios. Anyone? <coughs> Chairman Wood. Vice, Vice Chair Tardif. Um, I would just comment that um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking at in the direction of uh, scenario three, um, which is based on the minimum requested funding of 19 organizations, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, in that, in that scenario would really either be 20 or 17, seven, or, 17, 20. 17 oh. or 20. Um, while I'm waiting for other questions and comments from the commissioners, I would um, like to say having We've all looked at this in great detail and spent a lot of time on you know, the, the applications and the scoring. In my opinion, if we were to um, use scenario number one as a basis to try to work with the applicants that are able to receive more than just the bare minimum so that their programs have a really good chance of succeeding, um, not the level they, the highest level they requested, but at a level just a little bit below that, but not a minimum, which may deter their programs. Um, as a starting point, and perhaps modifying that down just a little bit to include one, two, or three other applicants below this line. Um, that would be my 
personal favorite. And I'd like to hear from the other commissioners. Uh, all common as well. Um, so I uh, personally uh, would really advocate for scenario number three. I think there are a lot of great organizations that came to apply for funding. And while they would receive the minimum requested, um, I was very delighted to hear the update from staff that, that there may be more funding that we may receive. So there would be room for the amount that they're going to receive to grow. Um, there's not an exact amount that we know, but I would feel most comfortable with scenario number three. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of need and some funding can help provide services. Uh, whereas if we were to go with scenario number one, um, there's going to be very few organizations and a lot of services that are, a lot of services um, will be cut and a lot of need uh, that, we, that exists here will be unmet. Okay, thank you. And I would like to clarify just something that I just noticed um, after, after having said I studied this extensively. On scenario, scenario number three, they would not be receiving the minimum funding that they requested but the minimum um, that we recommended. So for instance, if you looked at um, any one of these, their minimum might have been $30,000, whereas we were at 43 or 50 or higher. No, no. They, they, it, is, it is based on uh, the applicant um, minimum requested okay. funding, then. that right. column D. Um, it's for reference. C. C. It was for reference, it wasn't the average of the minimum. Okay, yeah. so it does fall back to the minimum, which was my concern that Solano? Um, yes, I, I'm going to say I favor with scenario three because at least 19 will get funded and maybe if we do get more, we will have the opportunity to maybe fund others. And I believe that if they're at least given the minimum, they can decide on what truly will, they can really work on in their, in their organization on what will work best so that they can just learn more things about themselves. <clears throat> Any other commissioners? Commissioner Garcia. Just wanted to add that I would be in favor of scenario three because it adds more organizations, puts more organizations into that bucket uh, to receive funds. But um, you had brought up the, um, the notion of these organizations being able to really use the money in a way that's going to benefit their program. Meaning there's a minimum amount that they requested, and I think we should really consider that because that's what they need to run their programs um, versus receiving a smaller amount that might not make a big impact. We're trying to run some programs here, and so I think we should really discuss that. But I'm not sure. Could you clarif clarify? Um, so you're, in, you're, I, you're leaning towards scenario three with a caveat, or? Yes, just, but I mean, I, I welcome more ideas as to what you guys think. Some stand to lose money in some of these scenarios, so I think we should really talk that through. Some of the funding is way less than they, what they requested. Correct. Some of the top tier organizations that, that um, for example, with scenario one, they were going to get more funds versus the other scenarios where they would get less. Well, the, the point I would like to make um, is if we were to um, opt for scenario number three, we would probably not be able to take that down to the 20th applicant because we would, we would be shorting everybody below the minimum that we, sh that we're allowed, right. we should or, or are allowed to do. So we would have to pull that up to include 17 applicants uh, not the 19, and then discuss what to do with the additional funds that were, re were released, correct? Correct. Okay. So my, I guess I'm getting back to my, my point is um, rather than taking 17 at their minimum, if you go back to exhibit uh, to scenario number one, there's 14 that are getting what we recommended, and perhaps if we were to reduce that by a certain percentage, say 10 or 15 percent per applicant, yeah. they would still get more than their minimum, and then we would be able to bring down and include at least two additional um, applicants. I ran some math today, and if we were to reduce on scenario number one, all the applicants, the 14 applicants by 10 percent, then we would be able to fund the next two applicants and have 16 applicants funded at higher levels than the minimum. If you were to go to 86 percent, 
it allows three additional applicants, which is the 17, um, which gets us back to the 17 on scenario number three, but they would each have a little more because it could be spread out evenly. I still kind of like scenario number three, Chairman Wood. Um, it's going to get us the same 17, I think. Um, but we'll get the same 17, but it'll also go to 20. I, I'm looking at putting it at 20. Chairman Wood, I would recommend keeping at that minimum funding level that you go up to the 17. And instead of reallocating the money left over, leave that there. And then when we received our final allocation, which we're anticipating is a larger amount, we will distribute that proportionately up to the maximum if that's the option that you would like. So we, instead of Correct. trying to play with those dollars now, since it's not the final, those aren't the final numbers and we will receive, we're anticipating to receive a much larger portion, then we would distribute that down the line and then it might shift down to 20, 21, <coughs> we don't know. But since that, that level is so close, we would either, we would bump and my, and all my, three. No, and I, I understand what you're saying. And my point being, if we <clears throat> take those 17 and we take the money, the uh, $75,000 that we're going to push, put back and wait to we, we receive additional funds, mm -hmm. my suggestion is taking that 75000 now and spreading it out over the 17 in scenario one if you reduce them all proportionally to include 17. Okay? And I wondered if you might, since the consensus I think seems to be scenario, scenario number three, uh, maybe you could take number one and reduce that by 86% each one, by 14%. Reduced by 14%? Correct, and okay. see if that takes us through the same 17 we're talking about on exhibit uh, scenario number three, but with a higher level, so they can start with a higher level now versus waiting. If I can interject, Chairman Wood, I'm looking at 20 on scenario number three. We can't. If, but if, if staff uh, can attest, we, we need clear direction when we go to city council, and you can't commit more funds than you have currently available under your authority. So if you were to go down to 20, you, you wouldn't have the authority to commit those funds. Well, I, I'm saying, okay, we would go, everyone would get a little bit below their minimum requested funding, right? That's the way it would figure out. I mean, it's kind of like, you can take that or leave it. <laughs> That's the way I'm looking at it. It's a little bit below your minimum requested, but there it is. You can take it or I, you can I, leave it. I think they're going to take it. I, <laughs> I would advise against that because we have we have that we would need to confer with each organization and ask them. They they indicated in their application this is the minimum they're willing to accept, uh, and uh, and we wouldn't have the opportunity to confer with them to say well if we give you twenty eight thousand instead of thirty thousand would you be willing to accept that? And it would be I I don't think it would be uh, good partners with those organizations that we're trying to fund. But. I, I, I'm not sure anybody, I, my, my thought would be not to do that. I'm listening to Commissioner Garcia. I don't think he would be in favor of that. No, to, to I think well. there's a minimum that we, we asked them a question and they respond, and I think we should honor that. But we can come back to that. I, I would still uh, like to see uh, scenario number one just uh, on the screen with each one reduced 14% funding through the 17th applicant like we would have on scenario three. Okay, so I just ran a 14% decrease, okay. and that takes us up to the 83% score or the 17. So that still gets us to the 17 that Correct. we would have in scenario three, with the, with the difference being they would receive a, a little bit more of a commitment today than if we went with scenario three and took that big chunk of money and held it to the end. So those scores would be much more in alignment with your initial Correct. average recommendation. Okay. As an example, um, if I could, so you've got the 14% reduction there going through 17. What did that do for, um, for instance, the fifth applicant, the Illumination Foundation? On your spreadsheet, I can't see it there. What's, what would they get? So that, based on your new analysis, that would be an allocation of $48,160. Versus the 30000 we would commit to if we went with scenario three. Correct. Uh, right. So and then I just wanted to point out um, for the second highest scoring uh, application, the Delhi Center collaboration, their minimum requested funding is eighty-three thousand 
70, so I, that would actually have to bump up, You'd have to push theirs back up to at least be at the minimum score. And that would take me. you might run into that maybe on one other applicant. I'm just going down here. You might run into that on one other. We'll Two. I'll be, right? Correct. Or. Let's see. If you can massage that a bit, Daisy, while yeah. we're still having discussion, just to know Absolutely. the ones that can't go below. And I'm going to go through and make sure they're at least at the minimum level. And then if we get to our funding level. Um, I'll continue on with comments and questions, discussion. Can we get responses from the rest of the commissioners? The Absolutely. Uh, those commissioners that haven't yet weighed in, um, Commissioner Frazier and Vasquez? Yes. Um, I do like scenario number three. I know it's not funding everybody at the... the the top end of what they were requesting, but it does diversify what we're funding. It gives a lot of programs enough money to get a lot of these programs started uh, and look for other funding sources, and maybe next year we'll be able to fund them at a higher level. But I think it gets more programs started with a little bit of funding rather than um, only starting the 17 that we've got listed on, or what is that, that 14 that we have listed on scenario number one prior to the 15% deduction. Um, so it just opens it up a little bit more is how I feel. I, I really like scenario number three. With, uh, I would just like to point out again, we're at this point, we're looking to take scenario number one and make that the same 17 applicants that we're talking about in scenario three, only with the difference being a little additional funding now by spreading out the funds we have available. So. I, I hear what you're saying. We want to try to fund as many as possible, and I, I agree. And I'm trying to get the higher funding allocation from Scenario 1 to fund 17 applicants, just as we would be doing in Scenario Number 3. If, there, if that's a fair comment, I can add to that. That is. Okay. But at this point, we don't, Daisy's still working on that. And Commissioner Vasquez, do you have some input? Right now, I'm turning to favor uh, uh, Number 1. Okay, so I just ran that based on the minimum up to our funding level, and that takes us up to fund Wise Place at 83.67%. Actually, I'm sorry. Um, Natty's House, neutral ground. So that, that brings us to a total of 787,252. Doing the percentage reduction and keeping in place the minimum for those that fell below that. Correct. So that would take us through 16 applicants? If you include yeah. Wise Place and Naughty's neutral ground? Yes. So, okay. So I would just like to point out that Scenario 1 has been adjusted to fund 16 applicants at a little higher amount um, at, what these, at what we recommended minus a little bit off each one to fund two additional. So we would be at 16 applicants at a higher amount than scenario number three, which is 17. Is that where we're at? That's correct. Okay. So I don't believe any of the commissioners have spoken in favor of scenario number two, which reduces the number further. So we'll set that aside. That's off the table. And I'd like to go back once again um, with each commissioner, if I could, those that want to comment or weigh in with scenario one, at 16 applicants versus scenario three, at 17 applicants at their minimum, the, the minimum requested, um, with a chunk of money being set aside to be allocated down the road. Yeah, I, I'd like to comment that I'm still in support of scenario three. Um, we'll be funding one more organization, and it seems like staff is made as well aware that there will be additional funding coming in. We don't know how much, but. I think we can rest assured knowing that they won't receive the minimum funding. They'll receive a little more than that. We don't know how much more, but they'll receive a little more. So I would be, I support scenario three. Thank you, Commissioner Ramos. Any other commissioners? I'm still in favor of scenario three. I have a question. So if we were to do scenario number one with alterations, um, how much would be around? How much would be left? Well, and, and that's a that's a, it's um, it's a good question um, because if 
If you do scenario three, um, you're going you you you're going to have uh, funds left that you need to re direct staff on how to redistribute today. And uh, um, scenario one, you currently have five thousand three hundred eighty-two dollars. Three and three, five, yeah, yeah, to redistribute. Or out of with the proration, with the proration, or without the proration. So that's at the fourteen percent reduction, yeah. Sorry. or the minimum score, the minimum funding Correct. amount. Which if I think affected three or four applicants for minimum? Correct. Okay. So scenario one, we would have $5,000 that would be, um, dis we would have to discuss among 16 applicants, roughly, right? And scenario three, we would have 75000 So I just did that math. So it's 75000 um, plus 3554 So if you were to divide that total by uh, roughly 17, Everybody would be getting um, seven thousand nine hundred and sixty-five additional. So they they would get uh, almost eight thousand more than their minimum requested funding, and that's and then they would get any additional funding that would come in at a later time. So they wouldn't receive the minimum funding; they would receive they would receive a little over that. But that under that scenario, you would be taking applicants above what the commission recommended they receive. For instance, if you look at Nadia's neutral ground, Nadia's house neutral ground, um, their minimum requested was 52000 And the commission, through all of our analysis and all of our scoring and weighted averages, recommended 52833 If we distributed it evenly across the 17 applicants, we would push them to 59000 some odd, whereas you would have someone like the YMCA where we, we, we had an average of $44,000, they would be getting 37000 So we would, you know, my only comment is when you do that across the board, certain applicants receive more than what the commission scores suggested that they have. Um, it opens up another issue. We can distribute these extra funds any way we want, correct? That's correct. <clears throat> We can, but it gets a little difficult if we go one by one, I think, to um, get a consensus of... Well, maybe we can... No, Commissioner Ramos had, had done, you know, the averages, which... Yeah, and then I, I want to, I do want to add that once this additional funding comes in, um, staff would be redistributing that themselves, and the priority order that they gave would be one to reallocate proportionally. So organizations might, at the end, might still get more funding than what we recommended. There's no real way to avoid that unless we could, we directly direct staff to follow another uh, another way to do that. Um, but yeah, they would reallocate and we allocate proportionately, and then after that, we allocate to the next highest organization, and then any remainder would be divided equally to all the organizations. Am I? Am, I don't know if I interpreted yeah, that correctly. Yeah, I, I, and I, I am. Uh, what I'm hearing is the commission land, landing on scenario three. And, and and looking to reallocate reallocate the the balance remaining uh, for scenario three, but uh, that's just my observation. Well, that's 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 a good observation. But my, my contention with that is, if you take that and just um, take that and average it across all seventeen applicants, then you have applicants that are above what we what the commission rated them as as being warranted to receive. And you have others that are going to be vastly underfunded on what we weighted them to receive. Versus scenario one is 16 applicants versus 17, but it's a much fairer allocation and distribution of what we scored those applicants to receive because we're doing it proportionally across all of them and not pushing some of them above, you know, vastly above the others. Commissioner Garcia? Chairperson, uh, sure, I'd like to recommend that we decide on a, on a, a which scenario we want and then go from there. We're, that way we're not jumping back and forth. Well, we're attempting to do that. Mike, I'm trying to lobby for something successful here. Yes, Commissioner. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. So you did an average allocation based on, on the possible available funds that would be there. Um, what's to say that when those additional monies come in for allocation that we cannot curtail the allocation to the maximum recommended application under our guidelines and then the ones that would be receiving a lesser amount would then be would have we would have funding to allocate to the to kind of even the board out, right? But I think as Judson had pointed out, we're not going to. Um, we would propose that when those funds come in, um, whether it's I don't know, 
how many months down the road, that we would not come back to the commission to allocate those, but that they would be allocated um, in a proportional amount, starting with the top applicant up to the amount that they were scored or requested. The, the maximum that they requested. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we would continue down the line yep. it, it, with each one, and, and if we ended up with additional ones, they would be at, added at that time. So, so, that, yep. so that process is not alterable then? I think it is. It's alterable, but yeah, um, yeah. that's what we're that's what we're recommending as an as an effective way for staff to reallocate based on additional funds that we receive. But it's right. at the I, discretion I, of the board. I think it's important if we can come to a consist uh, consensus tonight on what scenario we um, vote on and approve that we would at the same time say the additional funds would be allocated as the city has recommended, so that we didn't go case by case because that opens up a plethora of debate and other issues and just have it done strategically and fairly as the city has suggested. Um, so with that in mind, uh, Vice Chair Tardiff? Well, you're, you're convincing me to look a little more seriously at scenario one with the increased amount of applicants because it does seem more fair proportionally. And I'm not trying to change minds, although I am, but it's scenario. <laughs> I mean, I, I totally get trying to have, you know, one, two, three, four, even five more applicants. You know, I wish we had all of them. But my only concern is if you, if you um, take the funds on scenario number three, yes, you do get one extra person, but then if you take that 75000 or $80,000 across all of those, um, some of them do much better in that analysis than what they were scored or what they were rated by us versus scenario one, you're talking one applicant, but all of them would stay in a proportion to what we recommended as a commission based on all of our scores. And it's, I know it's kind of hard for me to explain, but that's why I'm leaning towards uh, scenario one as a more fair way to distribute the money over 16 versus 17. And Chair Chairman Wood, if I may uh, address uh, uh, Commissioner Ramos, uh, with Commissioner Ramos, you were saying with the 75,000 or 78,000 distributed equally, uh, um, by doing by doing it based on a percentage, it it is more equitable because you know that the percentage is overall uh, impacted overall what they what they uh, requested versus the just at an equal equal amount of dollars. So that's yeah. So I, I had initially said uh, just equally, right. uh, so just divided by the 17. But I, I did want to bring that point up exactly that we could choose to fund um, 17 organizations and then divide that $78,554 um, in a more uh, which is what you're proposing. more propor proportionately going sp specifically off percentages, so that way we can still fund one more organization and any uh, added funds that they then receive would be done in a more equitable manner. So they'd be on a weighted scale. So yeah. no, what, she, what you're proposing is, what I'm is proposing reduce now. the percentage from, you, you use 14%, what she's proposing is maybe 13%, right? I don't, or, so, I don't think that's what she's proposing. Or no, I mean 16, 15%. Right? Yeah, so in the end, we're basically proposing a very similar, a very similar approach. I would just like to really fund one more organization, and then everybody would just get a bigger cut, so that might be one or two percentage points. Oh, I see. That would um, that's that's yeah. a that's a very um, good point. Um, so then, Daisy, you would have to do a little math for us to to take us to the seventeenth applicant on scenario one on a weighted scale. So apply. Okay. So apply. Oh, apply it. Okay. Apply it on a weighted scale. So eighty-five percent. Okay. And then also, Commissioner. Um, I think it's if like I may, percent. I just wanted to point out um, for discussion. I calculated the difference between your initial recommendations and the max, and the applicant requested max and the minimum. So you can see if we bump up, let's say we receive the, the additional funding, if we were to bump it up to the max, what that would look like in an increase if you go with your recommendation and then if you go with the minimum. So you can take a look and see. Um, what those are here. Uh, which one are we looking at up there? So if you look at column H, let's say you go based off of scenario one, right? So based off of your recommendations, if we were to bump up to the max, the first, app, the first organization would receive an increase of about $6,083. The next one in line would receive an additional 12906 and then an additional 6,000, 2,958. So as you can see, it's not gonna be the same amount 
per organization. As the funds became available. Correct. If, if additional funding was available. Yes. Okay. That, um, that, that's good information, but on scenario number one, are you able to recalculate that um, and not at the 86% or whatever the, the percentage I gave you, but drop it maybe one more point to see if we can bring that number to 17 tonight okay. on a more equitable weighted scale from how we scored them originally. So then we can just side by side take a few examples to see what that does. So initially that looks like it brings Gets you down to the 17. Yeah, it gets you down to the 17. At a 15% at a reduction. Correct. And that's still leaving the ones at their minimum that we, we're not breaching any minimums. Let me verify those yeah. last two. Okay. Uh, certainly, yes. So does that, so that leaves 11, approximately 11,000 so um, allocated. That allocate. would then be re reassessed when the additional funding came in? No, it would be, re it'd be you'd, you'd need to provide us with direct, if you agreed on, on what you're landing on right here is, is scenario one with the 15% proration, right? And, uh, and then um, the remainder to uh, reallocate would be? 4,290. Right. 4,293, but the point being that it, would it is still the same 17 applicants in scenario three versus one, but this is a more weighted version of how they were scored by the commission on yes. their funding levels. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes, correct. And so that money, that 75 that 80,000 was distributed more percentage-wise. Yeah. Technically. Okay. Just trying to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, and you're saying we would, either scenario, we would have to take whatever funds are left and decide that tonight, right? Yes, if, every, if, every, if the commission is agreeing on, on uh, scenario number one with an 85% proration, then you would have to direct staff on how to reallocate the remaining 4,200. Okay. 4,290. Okay. Well, before I move to um, take a, a, a vote on scenario one versus three, I'd just like to ask the commissioners um, if they all understand what we're doing with one versus three, okay, and how it's being allocated. Um, also, uh, for Mr. Hodge, on this on this vote, this is not housing related. Is it just the commissioners voting, or is it all city hall? No, it, it, it's not housing related. So our tenant and student commissioners will not be voting on this matter. They're I'm, certainly um, able to participate, of course, as they have been, and their oh, input absolutely. is very much appreciated. But um, they will not be voting on the item. Okay, I'll still ask. Are there any other comments or questions? Can you go back to scenario three, please? Yes. Make it a little bigger. <laughs> I was just going to say. Just can't fit everything on one. And that remaining, the remaining funds that you're seeing there isn't. It's, yeah, so we would stop here. Yeah at the Public Law Center Consumer and Community Legal Assistance Project. Which is 17. Correct. Which is 17. And what uh, amount will we be redistributing? Sorry. $78,554. Quite a bit. And if we were to take that amount, and yeah, it's, it still would not, I don't think that would still, if you weighted it on their scores and divided it, I'm not sure that that would still bring them close to scenario one, which is the, the weighted average of their scores and the funding levels that we all gave, and the same 17 applicants being funded with, with a $3,000 leftover amount versus 78,000. So the math has already been done in that scenario. Correct? Correct. Yep. Um, in either scenario, um, this would be more difficult, um, then we would need to entertain an idea, for instance, on scenario number one with 30 some odd hundred dollars of where to allocate that money, correct? Correct. Can you take us back to that sheet? Yes. 
And so is everybody agreeing on scenario one with the 85% with the no, with the I, I proration? I, you know, let's go ahead and see if I can get a consensus now um, for my commissioners on what scenario that they're still leaning towards, if we can move towards one. Con so scenario one now includes 17 organizations, correct? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yep. Correct. So I'm fine with that. Okay, thank you very much. I'm good with that. Sure. I can support that. Still doing some counting. Commissioner yes. Garcia? It makes sense. Um, I understand the rationale behind it, so I'm good with it. Okay, okay. And I would be as, as well, so I, I appreciate the consensus. It's, it's important. Um, uh, for, the, for, the, so for the remaining 4,283, uh, then, you know, uh, you may just want to distribute that equally, it's up to the commission, yeah. of course. It's, it's difficult for, I think, all of us to see, especially. It's a relatively small amount when you divide yeah. it, it up. Yes, I think so. So I, I'm fine with that, divide it equally. Commissioner Ramos? Yeah, equally. that's good. That would be about $252.59. Uh, 252.36. Okay. Divided by 17. Can you give me that number again? One sec. So 4,290 is the leftover, the remaining to be allocated, and then divided by 17 organizations, that would be $252.36 additional per organization. Yeah, I don't think we had any applicants that we would push over, right? I don't want to get into, no, I think we're fine. Okay. So with that in mind, um, I would like to see if we have a motion to approve item five, community development block grant nonprofit application recommendations based on scenario number one with the redistribution to allow 17 applicants and also the remaining $4,290 to be divided equally among the 17 recipients of uh, 252.36. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Ramos. Do I have a second? A second. Thanks, Vice Chair Tardif. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And for this matter, this passes 4 to 0, with Commissioners Cano and Santana noted as absent, and Commissioners Frazier, Vasquez, Solano present, but not able to vote on this matter. And uh, Chairman Wood, if uh, if uh, on this uh, on this item, uh, ju I, we just want to be um, very certain that if the amount increases, uh, which you know the with the omnibus of this bill, I mean this um, the amount could increase anywhere from you know fifty thousand dollars to three hundred thousand dollars. It's 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 very uncertain right now, but it could increase substantially. Uh, um, we just want to be sure that the uh, that the commission isn't isn't is supporting our 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 proposal to reallocate proportionally up to the maximum amount of what each of the 17 organizations uh, requested, and then allocating the remainder of the funds to the next highest scoring proposal on the list up to the maximum of what that organization requested, and then allocate any remainder of the funds equally to each funded organization. And can I ask that we amend the prior? motion to include what you just said and, uh, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah yes can I ask and then take a vote on that again Absolutely. I have a one question on that um, yeah. so the next highest org uh, was America on track and then after that it's a community action partnerships and neighbor works and they all have that same score so would you then be able to just go with America on track or do you also have to consider so, so what, the next highest org would that be really one org or three organizations? So what would happen is is we would we would go up to the max amount on all seventeen yeah. to see as far as we can get starting from the top, and then uh, and then with any remainder remaining funds, then we would go to the next organization down, uh, um, and uh, you're bringing up an issue. Yeah. yeah. So we got to that scenario where there is additional funding. Um, right. But you can't, if you can fund all three organizations, then it would make sense to go with that. But if you can't, how, how are you? Well, so, uh, well, so let, me, let me clarify then. Uh, so we would, we would um, if, we couldn't, if we couldn't fund 
enough, all, of, all 17 up to the max, then um, we would attempt to fund the next three equal proposals uh, uh, in full up to their, um, up to the 85% proration that was agreed upon. And between the two, then we would, we would fund more proposals than uh, equally among the three equal scoring proposals than, uh, uh, than, uh, than funding the organizations up to the max. So it would be based on, uh, uh, based on the, uh, uh, the best possible outcome for the maximum number of applicants being funded. So do we need to state that well, specifically? Uh, yeah, yeah, I could state that. Can we, can, then can we, can, we can simplify as a commission the, the, um, the statement to be on the additional funds that may be coming to the city that our first preference and priority would be to take a minimum of $105,000 and fund the next three applicants that all scored equally. That would be first. And if that was achievable, that would be our preference. And then secondarily, the remaining funds would be distributed as per your original stipulation. Okay, yeah, so that's first preference, and then second, okay, okay, absolutely. Okay, Okay. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Commissioners Garcia, do you have any comments or questions on that? No, I would. I mean, I, I'm not, do we need an amended motion? Or? Right, so I would need an amendment, uh, amendment to the motion that was carried 4 to 0 to add an amendment that the, the additional funds that the city of Santa Ana will receive or may receive, the first priority would be to fund the next three applicants that scored 82.67 each to their minimum requested funding level of uh, 105000 in total, and that any additional funds after that would be distributed as per Judson Brown's original request to do them up proportionally up to their maximum. Yep. That's a lot of words. Do I have, to, do I have a, a motion to amend as noted? Uh, so move to amend as noted. Do I have noted. a second? Second. And those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. So, so that would carry amended 4 to 0. Is that okay? Great. Yeah, great solution. Yeah, yeah. thank you for bringing that up. It was something we would have hopefully caught. We would have caught it. No, it's a good yeah. idea to include yeah. more. At this time, um, there's no other items on the business calendar. I would like to move to public comments. Does the public have any comments they wish to share with the commission? Please know that you have three minutes to speak. We do have some public speakers. Thank you, Madam Reporting Secretary. And two of these speakers are going to require Spanish translation. Commissioner Ramos, will you be able to? I can assist, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll bring those two up, um, second and third. I'd like to first call Celine Romero. Buenas tardes, uh, comisarios. Mi nombre es Selene Romero. Sí, puedo hablar una línea a la vez y yo voy traduciendo si, uh, después de que usted habla. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Selena Romero. Uh, vengo representando a Cambodian Family. I'm here representing the Cambodian Family. Por parte de los padres. Uh, with their parents group. Um, tengo a mis, he, he tenido a mis hijos por casi nueve años en ese programa. I've had my children in that program for nearly nine years. Um, este programa uh, básicamente nos ha ayudado a, a mi esposo y a mí. This program has basically helped my husband and I. Uh, para ayudarles a mis hijos a su tarea. To help our children with their homework. Uh, porque es difícil por el idioma. Because it's very difficult because of uh, the language. Um, Yo estoy estudiando, estoy estudiando las clases de inglés. I am studying, I am taking English courses. Uh, uh, entiendo mucho, pero es difícil uh, hablar. I understand a lot of it, but it's difficult to speak it. Entonces, Cambodian Family nos ha ayudado um, 
las tareas a, a mis hijos y es porque es un poco difícil y también este, nos ha ayudado a, a sacar adelante a, a mis hijos y a veces es me deja todo decir So, uh, Cam the Cambodian family has helped us with their uh, children's homework, and they've also helped um, us uh, do more for our children because sometimes it's difficult. Uh, a veces es difícil para ir, nos ha ayudado también a llevarlos a campamentos. They've also helped us uh, take them on excursions, on uh, camping trips. Uh, otros lugares, por, porque nomás el que trabaja en casa es mi esposo. And other places, because the only one that works at home uh, is my husband. Uh, me, uh, me gustaría. I would like. Que ustedes este, siguieran apoyando el programa. That uh, you all would continue to support the program. Porque uh, nos ha ayudado mucho. Because it has helped us a lot. Este, gracias. Thank you. And can we address the speaker? Yeah, would you um, just please thank her for coming tonight to um, to um, speak with us, and also that um, that organization was a recipient of funds from the city, and uh, we're pleased to continue that. Uh, le quiero agradecer por venir esta noche a dar sus comentarios y también dejarles saber que Cambodian Family sí va a recibir fondos y uh, nos da gusto poder continuar apoyarlos. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next public speaker is Mana de Torres. Uh, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María de Torres. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Maria de la Torres. Mi hijo asiste al programa de Cambodia Family. Uh, my son yes. attends the Cambodian Family Program. Este, este programa, a mí como familia, este, nos ha ayudado bastante porque mi niño era un niño muy tímido. Este, uh, me de, me de, me de. Uh, this program has helped uh, my family and I a lot. My son used to be a very shy boy. Eh, y él se ha enseñado a relacionarse con, con los demás niños. Este, le ha ayudado a, a participar en varias cosas. And now he's learned um, how, to, how, how to relate to his peers and it's helped him in many eh, more en things. Sus tareas, with his homework. Um, le ha ayudado bastante. It's helped him a lot. Y se ha superado mucho en la escuela. And he's uh, bettered himself a lot academically. Y yo también les pediría que siguieran apoyando a este programa. And I also porque, ask you to continue to support that program. Porque en realidad sí nos ha ayudado bastante. Because in reality, in reality, it has helped us a lot. Les agradezco y muchas gracias. I thank you and, uh, yeah, thank you. And thank you. Would you thank Mana for her story and also that uh, we're, we're, again, happy to continue the relationship with the Cambodian family? Ay, gracias por compartir su historia y nos da gusto continuar a apoyar a Cambodian family. Re recibieron fondos. Gracias. Sí, gracias. Bueno. Thank you. And we have one more speaker, Brian Marquez. Hello, commissioners. Um, good afternoon. I would like you um, to please support the Cambodian family because it really helped me when I was little. I've been in the program for nine years, and I used to get bullied at school because I didn't know how to read. I could barely speak, and the Cambodian family has taught me how to learn. I mean, taught me to learn reading and speaking and it also helped me interact better with other people and it's also a good place to hang out and do homework because they have um, good people helping us with our homework whenever we need help like emotionally homework we always go to them and they help us thank you for allowing me to speak <coughs> Thanks for coming this evening. You're, you're, hold on a second. You're, you're a very good speaker and a very good public speaker, so they're doing great things. And we're, again, we're very happy to continue working with the Cambodian family. Thank you for coming to share your story, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Madam Recording Secretary, do we have any other speakers? Thank you. 
At this time, um, does staff have any comments they wish to share with the commission? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have, a, I have quite a few things. Uh, and uh, congratulations on concluding a uh, tremendous process this year for the allocation of our CDBG funds. Uh, that was uh, a very lengthy process, a very deliberative process, and uh, I'm very excited about the, uh, the outcome and, uh, and uh, really, really appreciate, uh, greatly appreciate all your time effort and hours on this uh, this important process for these for these uh, limited funds uh, so first uh, I want to start with the great news that we received uh, last Thursday regarding the uh, signing of the uh, fiscal year 2018 omnibus bill um, for our section 8 housing uh, for the section 8 program nationwide the program received a seven point seven percent uh, increase in funding for our uh, community development block grant program, as I mentioned, the program received a 10% increase in funding. For the home investment partnerships program, uh, the program received a 43% increase in funding. And uh, for our emergency solutions grant uh, funds program, the uh, program received uh, a uh, the overall program received a 5% increase. Uh, but the ESG program in particular received uh, approximately a hundred and seventeen million dollar increase um, so across the board for all four of our entitlement uh, programs we are uh, anticipating an increase through the uh, uh, the appropriations process and um, uh, um, we're uh, very uh, excited going into this next fiscal year um, second is I, we would uh, staff would like to request to move the regular CRHC meeting uh, scheduled for April 25th uh, we'd like to request to move that to April 11th to accommodate the public comment period from March 28th to April 28th and have the Commission's vote in time for City Council on May 1st for our annual action plan for our CDG home and ESG program uh, we'd like to request uh, request that to see to determine your availability for uh, April to move our regularly scheduled meeting from April 25th to April 11th. And if I could just stop for a second, I had already um, indicated that I would be available on the 11th, and I wondered if the other commissioners are available. I'll be out of town, um, but if it works for the majority, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. Fair Unless right. you all want to entertain the idea of April 4th, but that's in one week, so it might be a little difficult. Duly noted. Um, Mike, Mr. Hardiff? I'm good with it. And it would probably be helpful if we had one more just to ensure yeah. we have a quorum of course. from the other two that aren't here tonight. Yeah. So that is, is that still a Wednesday? I don't have a calendar. It is, yeah. Okay. yeah. So Wednesday, Wednesday, April 11th, same mm -hmm. time, 4 30. <laughs> Do you have to I won't be able to make it, I'm sorry. Do you anticipate um, items on the agenda, or we, that it would have to, we would need a meeting? Or we do. It's our an, it's our annual action plan on the agenda for that uh, uh, that meeting. Um, uh, we uh, we could move the meeting later to five thirty if that would work uh, for Commissioner Garcia. Yeah, I know that your travel time is quite a bit, so if moving it back. Slide. Yeah, I just I have a meeting from like. I could make the 5.30, you said 5.30? You could make, make it 5.30? Yes. Uh, so we'd be glad to, to, to schedule the meeting at 5.30 if that would work. That would work for me. That's fine. How long do we expect the meeting to last? Is that? Uh, it'll be an hour, uh, so 5.30 to 6.30. Shouldn't be. be okay with that? Yeah. Um, the three of us that can attend are saying yes. I'm sure um, Commissioner Fraser of Vasquez. I so won't be able to attend. I have another meeting for the county on that day. I should be available. And we're going to move back to 5.30, so with your schedule, maybe? Yes. Okay. 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 And then what we would do is um, reach out to the other two commissioners that weren't present to let them know um, in advance so that we can request that one or both be here. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to them uh, uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, uh, continuing on with uh, our uh, staff comments. Uh, we provided a, a copy of our story of success for uh, for March, uh, Mr. Larry Rivera. Uh, actually, Mr. Rivera is a, a security guard here at the Civic Center, and uh, so you might see him around here at the offices if you're ever working late or uh, or coming in coming around the uh, the city offices. 
Um, uh, I want to remind our uh, commission about um, the Lead the Way training email that I sent out on January 29th. Uh, the Lead the Way training is, uh, is targeted for our commissioners to take, as well as our Housing Authority executive staff. It's a, uh, um, a web-based learning program, learning module for uh, each one of our commissioners to uh, get to know uh, their fundamentals of oversight of our Housing Authority, the Housing Authority rules and responsibilities, the basics of, uh, of our Housing Authority, as well as the uh, essential Housing Authority skills. Uh, 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 we, uh, we have asked the Commission to complete the, uh, uh, the training by April 30th. Uh, does anybody need another copy of that email sent out? So the deadline's not April 15th, <coughs> it's the 30th? It's April 30th. Okay, I thought I saw 15th. And could you clarify, I mean, I actually started the process and I was sort of surprised at, um, it appears to be uh, at least an eight hour or 10 hour, uh, at least an eight hour module? I was estimating four hours, but okay. uh, you're saying it's eight hours? You want to settle with six? <laughs> I, I just want everyone to be, it is at yeah, least. Yeah, I appreciate the question. Did you, I, how, yeah. how, you haven't taken it yet? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, from our staff, I, I believe I believe our staff said it was either four to six. I thought it was six, so I just be prepared that it is four to six hours. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. You're, okay. You're, and, you're, and, and in terms of the importance of this training, I, I know going through it, it'll be may be quite dull, uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, build it up, Judge. Let's take that off the record. <laughs> uh, so, but. This is our this is our largest program. This is this is our, our by far our largest our largest program that we administer, and uh, and so um, you'll you'll really get into the details of, of how the program is administered and your responsibilities in terms of the oversight. And, and I'm sorry, and you did mention in the email that we might if we get audited, it's important to have these on record, right? That we took. The or whatever. <laughs> Precisely. Yes, we will take all of your certificates, and we are going to file those with our audit, uh, with our uh, uh, Section Eight Management Assessment Program reports, so that if an auditor ever comes on site and requests that your board complete the Lead the Way training, we can provide them with your certificates, as well as it will be um, a part of any any new orientation for any new members that uh, that join the board. A um, um, couple more things here. Uh, um, do you, do you, and you didn't even resend out the email uh, on I, the I lead the way it. training. You've got it. Okay. Okay. I, do, I didn't want to ask, um, and I'm, I think I know the answer. You can um, do the the take the the course in, in sessions, right? You don't have to complete it in one time. I'm sure that, is, can, that is correct. You can log in. And log up. Okay. Right. Okay. Yep. It keeps track. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I want to give an update. Next, I want to give an update on our city council actions, action items following our previous CRHC meetings. Uh, the amendment to the CNC Development Company and Orange Housing Development Corporation promissory notes was approved by city council on March 6th. Mm -hmm. The update to our down payment assistance loan program was approved by city council on March 6th. And if you're uh, registered to receive NIXLs, you may have seen a NIXL go out today regarding the uh, announcement of the changes to the program. Uh, our affordable housing funds policies and procedures, which went before the commission last November, and then uh, in a work study session, first in a work study session, and then for your approval, uh, um, those uh, policies and procedures were approved by city council on March 20th. Um, so uh, an update on those, uh, those action items that were uh, approved by our commission. Um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Chris Dalton, uh, our neighborhood improvement project specialist, uh, uh, accepted another position in the city of in, in Minnesota and uh, has recently transitioned from the city of Santa Ana. Uh, we are uh, um, we ha have had a recruitment for our community development analyst position, which was previously held by Sylvia Vasquez. Uh, and that position closed on uh, on March 23rd. So we are we are currently hiring a, a new staff to uh, to fill in for uh, for Chris's position. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, I wanted to share that um, in uh, February, um, the uh, Orange County, County of Orange um, convened the uh, first meeting of the Orange County Continuum of Care. Uh, at that meeting, I was asked to be on the board, and at that meeting, I was uh, um, nominated as the chair of the uh, Continuum of Care. And so now I'll be serving in that capacity on, our behalf, on behalf of our city. 
And if you've heard uh, recently about the United Way's United to End Homelessness campaign, uh, it's a, a, a wide-ranging campaign across Orange County uh, to bring together private and public stakeholders uh, to reduce homelessness. Uh, I was asked to participate on the leadership council for that campaign on, our beha on behalf of our city. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I do not have any other uh, uh, anything else to report. Thank you very much for the updates. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open it up for commission member comments. Um, commission members, please note that no member may speak more than once until all have had an opportunity to speak. Also, the commission may vote to limit our comments to three minutes each if we feel the need. I would like to go in order, but if you're not ready, I can come back to you. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Uh, I have really nothing to add, but thank you for the, uh, the reports on the funding scenarios. It was really helpful to be able to manipulate those in real time um, because I know Excel can sometimes be a bear. Um, so thank you, and thank you for, for going over that and explaining in detail how you, the, uh, the percentages because I'm not extremely mass savvy when it comes to this. Great. Um, and I did want to apologize for being tardy this afternoon, um, and uh, that's all I have. No, thank you. We're glad, glad you made it. Thank you. Commissioner Garcia. Well, the comment is just wanted to thank um, the staff for doing the great work with the process this year. Appreciate it and, um, and for helping us out today and figuring out the calculations and everything into Commissioner Ramos and uh, Commissioner Wood, Chairperson Wood, with the extra <laughs> behind the scenes calculating because I am terrible at math too. So it, it helps to get everybody's input. And with that said, uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. Um, thank you very much, Commissioner. I'll go ahead and jump in um, and echo what Commissioner Garcia said, um, thanking the staff to come tonight and give us the calculations in real time. And it's, it's a tough process, but I really want to thank my fellow commissioners for great ideas and input and coming to a consensus this evening, um, all four of us. Um, um, that, that was great. I really can't say enough about that, so thank you. Uh, the other thing I'd like to bring up, um, that's, no, thank you, is I brought this up, I believe, on the February 28th special meeting we had with um, our council, Mr. Rod Hodges, and we're having an issue with attendance, um, and it's, it could make it difficult for us to meet quorum at, at our special, or pardon me, at our next meeting on April 11th at 5.30. Um, and I have discussed with uh, <clears throat> Mr. Brown that I, I did, you know, reach out to one of the members to see if there was issues. And I'm not. but I would, uh, I've been approached by a couple of the commissioners, and we would really uh, like to know what the bylaws say about the attendance and what the um, where the line is where there's an issue. I believe that's um, been, been breached already. And so I don't know if you have that with you this evening, or if we can get that. I do. I, I can. I, I have um, the pertinent sections in front of me here. I can give you a brief uh, overview of if, what if, the bylaws say if you could, in regards to attendance. Uh, essentially, absences uh, require notification. Um, I mean, not require, but it's it's preferred if you provide notification in advance to the commission secretary um, that you will be absent. That way, it can be considered by the commission at the meeting when when there is the item that's excused absences. Um, and then the absence can be excused if it's um, something that the commission would like to excuse. But in terms of commissioner vacancies, um, if a commission member is absent from two regular meetings of the commission consecutively um, without uh, uh, the excused absence, so if it's deemed unexcused twice in a row, um, or if the uh, commissioner uh, fails to attend at least half of the regular meetings of the commission within a calendar year. Um, uh, let's see, the office shall become vacant and shall be so declared by the city council. So you would need to not appear and be unexcused uh, for two meetings in a row or not appear in over half of the meetings in a calendar year. And then at that point, it would have to be an action item to the city council right. to have the, the seat declared uh, vacant. Okay. Well, um, I just want to thank you for the clarification and um, to the commissioners who I've discussed this with and to all of us. You know, my, my first preference and my, my goal would be that, you know, I would reach out to any commissioner that's not able to attend to see if there's an issue that can be resolved because I would 
first want to have the representation that we already have at the meetings. And so that's my, that's my goal, is to reach out to the commissioners that are maybe missing uh, more than they should to see if we can resolve that. Um, well, great. I'm glad you, you, you volunteered to do that, Chairman Wood. <laughs> but, I, but I do that through the city with their reports that they give me from staff on attendance and then also with the council members that um, each of us report to or work under or, or refer to. So, again, I only brought that up because uh, a couple of the commissioners had discussed it with me, and I am watching that and trying to resolve some of the attendance so that we have a, a fuller representation, if you will. And I'll go back to Commissioner Garcia for a question or comment. But just the comment, I, I would ask that we keep in mind um, if a commissioner doesn't respond to emails and such, that we reach out to them to see if something might be going on in terms of, like, like not, Commissioner Connor had stated that she did not receive a few emails that we had sent out, or the city. Um, so I don't know if that's, in certain cases, I mean, we should probably follow up if they don't respond or call or something. And, and that gets back to my point, you know, the, the letter of the law, is one thing that Mr. Hodges has just told us what the letter of the law is and the spirit of the law is, as you're saying, is to try to reach out and see if they're not getting their emails or if something else is at play. So I, if I could, I will you know, come back to Judson on this and, and see what we can reach out on this once more. Is that okay? Absolutely. So, I think the chairperson bringing it up to the individual um, commissioner, um, you know, just that it's been noted and, and we'd like to see an improvement. <clears throat> Do we know it? Um, that's it for my comments. Um, Commissioner Aurora, Hello. Um, I passed out some flyers, some mini flyers. So Saddleback is hosting a noble event. I'm the vice president of the street fair. There's about four things happening. So there's the 5K race. And this is all in memoriam of Noble Franklin, who was our security guard and he passed away. I never personally met, met him, but one of the students decided that they wanted to keep his legacy because of, he helped out athletes and there are scholarships now, at least 1,000 scholarships. So this is just an invitation and more information about the event, which is on Saturday, April 21st from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. And that's it. Great, thank you for sharing. Vice Chair Tardif. Well, quite an improvement from what we were looking at <coughs> last year uh, with uh, uh, there was concern that um, our budget would be cut mm -hmm. and um, didn't turn out that way. So um, I think the uh, federal legislature and the administration working together um, for the betterment of the community. And uh, I appreciate that and I think uh, the staff and commissioners all appreciate that. So I think that's good. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Commissioner Ramos? Uh, yes, just thank you all to uh, all the commissioners and staff as well. Um, this was my first year going through the CDBT process, and I'm glad that we were all able to come to a consensus and make it what I think is a good decision. Um, also, thank you, uh, Chairman Wood, for bringing up the attendance issue. That was something that I have been very concerned with. So I want to thank you for acknowledging the concerns of your uh, commissioners and bringing them up. Um, and I also have some questions for staff. I wanted to see if there were any updates uh, for Roosevelt Walker Community Center from the city uh, and the people. Uh, for the uh, Roosevelt Walker grand opening, uh, we'll uh, uh, circle back with you on, on that uh, grand opening. I'm not sure off the top of my head when it's, uh, when it's scheduled. Daisy, do you know? So we will be meeting with Parks and Rec tomorrow to get final updates on this. Um, but the latest update that I have is that they're finishing up their punch list items for the actual community center building and then um, they've started working on the landscaping. So usually the landscaping is the last piece so we should be receiving notification of the grand opening soon. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And on the depot? Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, the, de the depot at Santiago, what, uh, what we believe the, uh, the grand opening is gonna be scheduled in May, right? In May right now. And uh, we will absolutely ensure that, uh, that uh, the commissioner, our commission receives uh, invitations to both grand openings. Great, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Vasquez? Uh, yes, um, I'd appreciate it if uh, Mr. Hodge, if you would uh, email me. We sent that email 
about the training? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? With that in mind, this meeting is adjourned. The next special meeting is scheduled for April 11th at 5.30 p.m. here in the council chambers. Thank you.